Cause I'm Slim Shady, yes I'm the real. All you other Slim Shadies are just imitating, so won't the real Slim Shady please stand up? Please stand up! Stand up! Stand up, Slim Shady! What up, people? What up, party bitches? Uh-oh, I think we're crooked. One second. How's that? How's that? What up, people? What's going on? Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 86. Four away from episode 90. And then, you know, not too long and we'll be at episode 100. Woot! Good job. Good job, folks. Thanks. Thanks for getting me here to episode 86. Even though there's literally nobody watching, I don't care. As I said over and over again, I've gotten past the the, 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 the fact that I have no audience. You gotta work for it, so I'm doing what I need to do. You hear me? There was a few times throughout the week, this week, that I, that I was thinking to myself, shit, you know what? Is this podcast really going to work out for me? Am I really going to be able to do this? And then I said, you know what? Of course. Well, and even if it doesn't, just don't stop. Just, it's fun to do this. And it's not hard. You know, it's a it's a process. You know, it doesn't. It's not like I can just whip out a camera and, and start talking. You know, there's a lot involved. Oh, I got long nose hairs. Shit, should have trimmed those bad boys. But it took me a while to get to this point, and this is still the beginning. Like, the way I've got all this shit set up, and, you know, I've got it smooth and it flows nicely right now. But when I started, I was I was frustrated and trying to figure shit out. Look at all this. But it doesn't matter about that. Look what I got on, f fellas. It's Teddy Fresh! It's Teddy Fresh! These are, like... I can't believe how high quality these shirts are. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a fan of Ethan and Elo. But, like, this is, this does not, this is a, like, a thick, heavy material. It's nice. It's great, actually. And the embroidery is very profesh. And not only that, but they uh, put the little uh, barcode. You know, see, they got a nice... A nice barcode tag here, but it's attached v via via safety pin. That is profesh, because there's nothing worse than getting a sweater or a shirt or whatever, and it's got like 16 tags on it and a few stickers, and they're attached with those plastic twig-looking things, whatever they are. I hate that because you get. You know, you usually don't have access to a knife or scissors when you purchase it. Well, you do, but it's it's a pain in the ass. You don't want to you don't want to go reaching for scissors, so you usually rip them out and you rip the you rip a hole in the shirt. Or either that or the tag right on the neck. Sometimes that is fucking just makes you makes the back of your neck itch. It scratches your back of your neck constantly. You know what I'm talking about. But this this shit, this is high quality material right here. I couldn't believe it. When I got the package in the mail, it was like, it had a weight to it. <laughs> you know, t-shirts aren't usually, like all my, ev literally every single one of my t-shirts, every other one, they're all light. Like, like you can, you know. Like they were cheaply made, which I I never I ne I've never actually bought an expensive piece of clothing unless it was, uh, like a suit for a wedding or something. But 
this this material, whatever this material is, it's comfy and it's high quality. You can just tell. You can just tell the high quality of it. I don't know anything about clothing making, but what what I do know is that this is a high quality shirt. And you can tell just by just by just by holding the package. And then you pull it out and it's like, "Wow." The material. I can't if I knew what the material was, I'd sell, I'd tell you. But I have no idea. So you should just go buy a Teddy Fresh t-shirt. And uh, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. I don't know if they're all this qual- if, if, if they're all this material or what. But and the, uh, um I've you know, I've been wanting to buy Teddy Fresh for a while now. My plan is to get um, you know, every few weeks or every month or so I'm going to buy purchase uh, an article of clothing from each of my favorite YouTubers. I want my entire wardrobe to just be YouTuber t-shirts and sweaters and hats, whatever they sell. And back in the day when Rhett and Link made their mythical shoe, I was considering purchasing that, but I honestly didn't really like the look of the shoe. And I... uh you know, I was, I was young as well, so I didn't have money. I would have had to rely on my parents. Well, one parent at that time. We're not going to get into it. Um, so, episode 86. I, uh, it's, I'm still, this week ha- is, a, is kind of a, a lot going on, so I don't have a lot of time. So again, just like last episode, this is going to be another shorty. And even though I said last episode was shorty, it still it still was at least an hour, wasn't it? You know, you can't complain over that. That's some good quality material right there. Even if I'm saying nothing, which I always am. But I'm improving. I'm improving. <laughs> I'm improvement. You know, when I started this and the adventure it was very hard for me to just start talking and continue the conversation for a few reasons one I'm by myself so I gotta you know I gotta I gotta I gotta (laughs) I gotta you know I just I gotta continue the conversation whatever I say I have to answer you know it's easier when you got someone else to bounce your ideas off of and then you do a banter like dynamic banter Speaking of which, I think Dynamic Banter is the next uh, YouTube slash podcast personality. (laughs) Dynamic Banter is the next piece of merch I'm going to get. Pretty sure. Might not. It might be be Rhett and Link. It might be... I don't know who. I don't know. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You, You might not be thinking, but you might be thinking that I am only watching Rhett and Link because of their popularity and I've only known them since Good Mythical Morning. Well, you're wrong. If you don't if you're not familiar with this podcast, then you don't know my history and my connection to YouTube. I've been watching Rhett and Link since day 1 since they started their channel. I seen their evolution, and their evolution was fantastic. Just like Shane Dawson, in that everything that they evolved into turned out to be a great success. And that's not easy to do. But there's a few YouTubers out there who know how to do it. And the evolution of your channel is crucial. It's It really, you have to do it. And even though even though you don't want to, you have to. People get older, people move on, people change, ideas change, society changes, and you have to adapt and overcome. You know, if if because what a lot of people do is they find their niche 
can they find their audience with that niche? And, you know, it could last for a while. That audience would love what they're doing. And they, you know, that's what built them. That's what started them. And it's their creation. So it's it's hard to let that go. And if you don't let it go, your audience will fade away. Because you got to change. Unfortunately, you might be doing what's good and what you like and what other people like, but eventually it's going to die. It's going to fade into nothing. Eventually people will move on, find other interests. And you have to understand and be aware of what's going on. And you have to adapt and overcome, like I already said. Which, you already know this. Everyone knows this. I don't, I'm just saying stuff, okay? And I've said this many of episodes. And it ju- I just keep coming back to saying shit about YouTube. But if you haven't checked out Rhett and Link, you haven't checked out Dynamic Banter. Here's what I'll say about Dynamic Banter. Um, you know, if you don't know who they are, Steve Zaragoza from originally Source Fed, then Valley Folk, and blah, blah, blah. You know his story. And then also, Mike Falzone, who started, well, he didn't start, but he was on Source Fed. And, uh, and he's just, you know, he does, he does, he does his stand up comedy along with Elliot Morgan. But anyway, Elliot Morgan's not part of Dynamic Banter. Shows up every once in a while, but he's not part of it. Dynamic Banter is a podcast of two people, um, Steve and uh, Mike. And it's a very unique, specific type of comedy that not a lot of people will understand or enjoy. A lot of people will find it annoying. But uh, I really like it. You may find it annoying, but if you give it a chance, you can you can like it too. Truce to me. Just give it a shot. Just like The Office. You might not like the... You might think I don't like The Office. But if you give it a chance, you might like it. You never know. But some people don't want to give it a chance. They, they you know, they, they, they're, they're giving it a chance is watching the first three episodes. If they don't like it by then, they give up. And you know what? I agree with that. I really do. That is, that's actually one of my philosophies. Because if you think about it, if, if uh, these TV producers or whatever they're producing, if they can't catch the audience interest within the first three episodes, then why the fuck should we continue to waste our time watching this unentertaining show. And that's... Uh, and I'm... And I, you know, I know they have to have this in mind. Like, It's hard for people to just start a new series because there's, you know, you're attached to the previous series. Especially if you're someone like me who w- continues to watch this the whole series over and over and over again because I can't let it go. I have trouble letting things go. You know, I'm different than most people. Uh, most people can and are willing to uh, to try new television shows, but uh, it takes it takes it takes a while for me to actually step away from what I'm in enjoying and move on. But usually, when I do it. I end up liking that new show just as much as the previous show I watched. Not always. There's definitely shows I've tried to watch and I just couldn't get into them. But but again, like I said, if I would have given them a longer chance, I probably could get into it. And that's the thing with, with, with certain TV shows. A lot of times they actually don't catch your interest by the third episode. But uh, they still have a massive audience because people gave it that extra that extra second chance that fourth chance fifth and you know uh, 
if it doesn't catch your interest by the third episode, if you're willing to continue to try and enjoy it, and if they don't catch your interest by, let's say, the sixth episode, then it, is it really worth it? Then at that point, you should know whether or not this show is for you or not, you know? Because I feel like six episodes, that's that's enough time. Like, they're really doing something stupid if they don't catch the audience's interest by the sixth episode. And I'm sure that happens. And people still probably enjoy this those shows because they stuck with it. Because I know there's people out there who, when they start a series, they have to finish it, even if they don't like it. Same with people who read certain books. Uh, if they don't enjoy the book, they'll still finish it because they they have this mindset of of not quitting. And I've I've I wish I had that, to be honest, because I've quit more things in my life than than completed things. And so I want I want this podcast to be an example of something I stick with. And the podcast itself isn't something you can necessarily complete. It's not a TV show. It doesn't come to a conclusion. It's a continuous effort that can go on for years. Um, so, you know, if I, let's, let's, if I make it to 500 episodes, that will be a success for me. Even two hundred, even one hundred is a success. Success, but it's not. It's not. I won't be completely satisfied until I hit the five hundredth episode. Well, I don't know. I just feel like you know, I've quit so many things in my life and given up so many times that I I I need to stick with this and continue. And I keep I have to keep telling myself that over and over again and spread these positive vibrations throughout the stratosphere. And you know what? Something good should come of it. Am I right? <laughs> now what do you think of this mic here? Last episode I was I was listening to the audio. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I kind of think the Yeti is higher quality than this. Now, this is a Shure mic. You know, Shure is top of the line right now for microphones. But it's the cheapest microphone they sell. So, there's that to think about. The Yeti... I don't even know where it went, but the Yeti microphone, the Blue Yeti, it's not even bad quality. It's great quality. It's not the best. There's definitely better ones. Like, I'm sure this Samson mic would be fucking fantastic. It's not really for podcasting. I was going to use it for other stuff, but I would love to use it for podcasting if the fucking thing would work. Gosh. I contacted Samson. Told them my issue. E they said, email me. Emailed them. The guy said, what's the problem? I told him. He said, have you tried this? I said, yes. Have you tried this? I said, yes. Have you tried this? I said, yes. Then he stopped talking to me. So I sent another email. Didn't hear anything else. So I'm going to have to drive my ass down to Samson. I'm going to head right into the headquarters. I'm going to burst open the door of the CEO I'm going to grab him by his necktie and I'm going to say, you should have fucking listened to Joe Rogan, you cunt. And then I'm going to choke him. I'd have to go to the back of him and then choke him. <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying about Joe Rogan? Well, he says you shouldn't wear a tie. Because that's, that's an easy target for someone to attack you with. They could just grab it and fucking choke you. Easy. You're dead. Or knocked out at least. I'll bust in, and I'll, I'll choke him, and then I'll, I'll, I'll choke him right to the point where he's about to pass out, and then I'll let him go, and I'll say, hey, bitch, 
fix my mic? And he'll say, okay. I'll say, fix it or get me a new one. And he'll say, okay. That should work, right? Violence is always the answer. Just like last episode. Violence is always the answer. No, don't. That's not true at all. So I haven't showed the card yet. Tradition to show the card. Here it is. Blah, but you don't get to read it because I don't want you to. And you never will. Um, I quickly wrote down just two topics right before I sat down. Well, right before I started recording, I should say. Because, uh, again, I don't have any. I didn't have anything on the card prepared. But, um, what the fuck was I going to say? Yeah, but like I said, this week, is uh, there's a lot going on, so I don't really have time to do this. But I'm using the little, the little window of time I have to, uh, to make this podcast continue to happen. So let's uh let's jump into these topics, shall we? Um Adam Savage. You familiar? He's the he's the blonde dude from Mythbusters, Jamie Heideman's partner in crime. He has well, I think he has a new show on Discovery, but he also has a YouTube channel called Tested, and it is fantastic. Uh, if you're into cool creations, building stuff, movie stuff, <laughs> I'm I'm hor I'm butchering describing this channel, but you you know who Adam Savage is. You know what he does. Well, he takes that and put put it into his own format he's in his own shop with his own camera crew and they just film him making whatever he's making and he makes crazy shit like really good stuff it looks fantastic and it's very functionable and his his m the way he thinks about everything is very interesting he's got like a an almost an engineering slash m m movie producer sort of type way of looking at everything. No, I don't think movie producer is the right word, but he has you know, definitely an engineering perspective on, on things. I don't know if he's an actual engineer, but he, he definitely has the, the aspects of an engineer. I wouldn't say qualifications because... Well, I don't know what you need to be qualified as an engineer, but I feel like he could definitely be, be an engineer, no problem. He's a, he's a, he's got, he's got the moves. He's got the grooves. He's got the boobs. Um, there's something else I wanted to say about Adam Savage. Can't remember though can't remember <laughs> I can't remember ah ah oh dropped it doesn't matter just leave it on the floor I already talked about both topics talked about the second one without even realizing Can you guess what the second topic was? <sighs> Bet you can't. Bet you can't, motherfuckers. So, I guess we'll jump on into Reddit. Finish off this uh, podcast with a little Reddit sesh. And hopefully the next, uh, the next episode, I'll be prepared more. Because uh, I'll probably be filming it on, you know... I do it. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So throughout the week, I've got to, you know, I've got, I've got to film some, unless, unless I, I filmed on the weekend. 
So this weekend, I should have enough time to come up with some ideas. But we'll see. We'll frickin' see, my friend. We will. We shall see. We shall see, said the blind man. But the, uh... Come on. Come on, start recording. Start recording. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Yes, my friends. So, Reddit. The first post of the day by so, by Trees. We got, we got a Carl Sagan quote. The U.S. should legalize marijuana, tax it, and send all the proceeds to NASA. NASA would inspire kids to explore the universe, and pot would inspire adults to explore the universe. What a great quote from Carl Sagan. Let's give that an upvote, shall we? A ring made of resin epoxy mixed with strontium aluminate powder. Wow, fancy. Looks like it's red hot. Looks like he can't touch that, but he's touching it. Maybe he, maybe it is just uh, a heated up piece of metal, and he's just got strong hands. Oh, look at this shit! A twenty-five year old unit next to an average sized chunk. Damn. This guy's massive. Wouldn't want to mess with him. What's this? Raekwon Do? You guys been seeing that bottle? Here it is. The bottle cap challenge. You got a fucking spin kick. Send nudes. Oh, but he actually did it, though. Spin kick, knock the bottle, bottle cap off. Look what it says, though. Send nudes. And he did it. So the first person to start this was Jason Statham. And then everybody started doing it. Oh, here's another one. I can't believe... Like... Look at it go. Woohoo! See, when these challenges begin... You, I, I, well, at least I never really get to see the progression of how they start and where they, I usually see where they end, like the mid, their peak and then the end. But here I'm seeing the full progression. I'm see, I've seen, you know, the Jason Statham video right when it came out and I had no idea it was going to turn into a challenge like this, but it did. And now I'm seeing, you know, a few days ago when it started, there was no one doing this and then there was like one, one other person and then two more people and now I just every every piece of social media I go to I'm seeing people do this goddamn bottle cap challenge which I uh so I, I kind of like the fact that these little challenges happen every every year every few months or so look at this fucking wolf holy Christ because these challenges even though they're usually pretty dumb and I don't always participate, but I do sometimes. Like the Harlem Shake, I participated in. Um, but usually people just participate simply for the fact that they know that they're going to get views. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Take advantage of the opportunity. But I don't know. For me, I don't really want to get involved. But I will. But I like them for the fact that um, it's a good it's a good reference point for when you're thinking back. You want to remember stuff. You say, okay, well, I did this around when the bottle cap challenge was was uh, at its peak. So that would have been 2019 in the summer. Bloopity boppity. You know what I'm saying? Hey, England. Are you calling my name? Hey, England. Someone's calling your name. What? What is this? I don't get it. Hey, England, have fun at work tomorrow. Why? <gasps> what's uh? What's the deal with England? Yeah. Uh, stop it! Stop it! Acid reflux! Stop it! Took me too, too long to figure out what this meant. 
Oh, say Independence Day to a Brit, and the first image in their head will be Will fucking Smith. Right. I forgot about July 4th. That's why. It was Canada Day on July 1st, but no one cares about that. Too hot to play fetch outside, so how about a game of, of lazy fetch inside? Boring. Alex Morgan celebrates scoring against England by pretending to sip tea. I remember this. She was pretending to sip tea, but someone thought she was smoking a joint, pretending to smoke a joint. And what was this comment? Say, I'm English and I laugh. She pretended to sip some tea. It was funny. People need to chill out. It's what we are known for. It's like if the English pretended to eat a Big Mac or shoot up a school. Yeah. I hate how the fuck there's controversy over the stupidest shit. Like, why do people got to make a big deal out of this? Why? Oh, do black people call their cats? Can't say it. I'm not allowed to say that word on the internet unless uh well there's a few there's a few you know a lot of people say you can't say it at all even referencing s someone else saying it or whatever but i honestly think like if if that word's in a in a rap song or if it's if you're literally just re just reiterating what someone else said and they use the word how is that racist it's not you're not being racist. You're just... You know what I'm saying. Uh, well, so why would black people call their cats that word? But I'm sure they do. Why vacuum cleaners are so loud? Vacuums kill sounds... Which is why there is no sound in space. The sounds are afraid of being killed by the vacuums, <laughs> so they run away. The scared sounds find your ears to live in. Wow! <laughs> who would have known? I love watching these. People who are really efficient at what they do. And they've got it down to a science. It's just so fascinating. It's so fascinating watching people doing their perfected craft that they've spent years working up to to become that good. I don't want to watch anymore. The 4th of July, celebrating a time when two nations stood together under a common principle. That England needed to get fucked. Okay, lots of words, lots of words. No one wants to see the words. Don't care about Superman. Seen this today. He pulls cucumbers out his eyes, but it's horribly done. You can tell it's fake. Shadow and slope makes it look like he's floating. Wow, it does. Ah, yes, okay, now I figured out the perspective. That should be in in the pers the weird perspective. Um, Sue Reddit. Bill Nye, can't show it. Women in bikinis, you can't show it. Oh my god, we're so sensitive. This is a fully developed sperm. This is what all humans inherit from their phagia. Men are not degenerate females. Huh? Makes no sense, but okay. Meow, IRL, it's just a fat cat. Why the fuck does this get 30... Oh, it's just 3K. But still, why is this on my page? I don't want to see that. It's nothing. It's not even... Lost the lid to my Pringles? No problem. Put a glad container on there. Perfect! Yeah, we, okay, we get it, buddy. It's it's on there. You don't have to tip it upside down. 
to rob a store at gunpoint. You just got fucked, motherfucker. She's gonna beat your ass. Get the fuck out of there. Hit him with the hammer. Nice. Surprise, happy birthday. It's a pair. Oh, it's a toucan. How the fuck did this person get their hands on a toucan? Can you just have them as pets? I can't see it. Bikini Bottom. Me. Punches a bully who's been punching me. My parents. Good job on standing up for yourself. The law. Yeah, that's fine. It was self-defense. Schools. Mr. Krabs freaking out. Oh, why are you boring me? I'm right. Oh, booing. Not boring. Sorry. Dyslexia. Yeah, when Facebook is down, everyone looks at Reddit. Today, apparently, Facebook and Instagram were both down. But I was on it. I was on it today, and it wasn't down. But everyone was freaking out. And I only went on Facebook and Instagram to see if it was down. But it wasn't down for me. And I, I don't use Facebook, and I don't use Instagram, and I don't use Snapchat. I use Twitter, sometimes, and Reddit. And that's not because of what I've recently heard with Hotep. So don't go thinking that. I've had these ideas for like well over a year or two now. I just feel like these social medias are not not healthy. They're not. They're you're just it's not healthy and you're just you, all it is is fake people. It's it's all fake people doing fake things. I can't stand fake people online. But you know what I hate even worse? Fake people in real life where as soon as they start talking, you know that's not them. You can just tell when people are faking. Well, unless they're really good at it, but people are fake. A lot of people are fake and they try to... What's the word I'm looking for? What the fuck is the... When you, when you copy someone, what's the word? What's the word? Im impersonate? Is that what I'm trying to say? No. Maybe. They copy. People copy. That's, I've waited too long. Opens chips in class. Some random bitch I've never even seen. We're back to where I was today. Redditor, 199 karma. Let's give you an upvote. Wow. These are DMs I get from guys. I notice your Avi looks like a frog trying to hold an elevator open. It does look like that. Yeah. Hippos. Wow, he's got a big mouth. Jesus, they can open their mouth pretty wide. I didn't know that. Hey, look, a new format of this is meme. Instagram users, Reddit users. Ha ha. Loser. Your shit don't work. Nobody. America's Got Talent contestants. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning I break my legs and every afternoon I break my arms. At night I lay awake in agony until my heart attacks me. Puts me to sleep. My heart attacks put me to sleep. That was a good episode of Spongebob. But that is true. Every, not everyone, but a lot of America's Got Talent contestants have the sob story. And they always got to overemphasize it and, you know, they take the the person aside and then they they make a whole fucking segment of their, their history and that shit's bullshit, man. They should not even tell you their past history. It should be just focused on the talent aspect because that shit 
influence the goddamn judges to put them through or give them the fucking golden buzzer just because of their goddamn sad history. The sadder your history, the fucking bigger chance you have of getting that gold buzzer. It's not about talent. Even though the show's called America's Got Talent, it's not about talent. It's about who has the biggest sob story. And that's unfortunate. And that's with every fucking show that's like this. Well, yeah. Nah, wah, meh. It can be. You know, American Idol, there's a lot of sob stories on there. But it's, uh, you know, they have, to, they, they still, they still, they still let the talented singers go through. But I mean, in the beginning, when it's just the auditions, they'll let, they'll let people through just because they have a sob story, even if their, even if their voice isn't that great. And then they'll go through the first round of the show and they'll get kicked off. That's great. You know. Why? Like, honestly, I honestly think they should just cut the story bullshit. Stop with the sob stories. Don't mention it. Don't say anything about it. The only thing they should be talking about is their talent. When the people, when the camera crew comes up to them and says, you know, ask them about what they're doing or whatever, they should just say what they're doing. They should not, because you see it. The camera will come up in the lineup and someone will say, oh, yeah, I'm doing this because um, my my father has cancer and he's been struggling with dementia his whole life. And I just found out yesterday that my grandma disowned me and I've been living on the street for five weeks and blah, 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 blah. So I decided to do this. Shh, don't say any of that. Just say, oh, here's my talent. And here's what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Well, maybe not how, but here's how it's going to go. So, hope you enjoy it. But it's not like that. That's why I don't watch those shows anymore. I used to love them. Now I hate them. You know what else I hate? Reality TV, which I guess you could say those talent shows are a sub genre of reality TV in a way. But the the real reality TV, the TLC shit, I can't stand that shit. And uh a lot of people are starting to like it now because Ethan is promoting it on H three podcast and Tom Segura and Christina Pajitsky are promoting it on your mom's house. So and it's not like they watch it because they think it's a, you know, intellectual type show. They they understand that it's a trailer trash type of uh, of of uh, entertainment, but that's why they're um, that's why they're attracted to it because it's so it's so so low to the ground it's so uh you know what's the word i'm looking for it's um you know there's the you know you know what it is you know what i'm saying i hate i hate this i hate not knowing what i need to say but it's just um you watch a reality show you feel disgusting because for one you can tell how fucking phony it is and for two, usually the main actors are someone in a, either a low-life situation where, you know, they're living in a pile of garbage and they don't know what to do with their lives, or they're extremely rich and they're using that to make this shitty show. And either way, it's both horribly produced and it's just, you know... All that combined with other aspects of it, the fact that these shows are just cringe, full of cringeworthy. They like that. That's what turns them on. But for me, it's too, it's too, 
it's way too cringy for me. I just can't do it. Like it's not they've they've excelled to this other level where it's so cringy that it's actually ironically funny to them now. But for me it's just simply cringe. And I hate it. I used to actually like it. As a child, the drama of the show attracted me to it. And I didn't, you know, I was young, I was a kid, so I didn't understand life. So I, y I couldn't tell the phony aspect of it. But now I, I see it right away. And I'm like, shut this off. I can't, I can't watch it. It's too, it's too ridiculous. It's too over the top. They just, every episode, they, they have to come up with some bullshit fucking dramatic scene. I don't know. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say, people. Like I said, not a long poop cast. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. I'll see you in the next one. Is that what I'm supposed to say? I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. Please like and subscribe. Ugh. I hate that. I hate doing that. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Ugh. God, that's gross. How can people just do that and feel comfortable with it? I cannot. I mean, obviously I would if I just did it every day and didn't think about it. I hate asking people to subscribe and like and hit the bell icon. I know that's that's part of the YouTube game. That's a big part of it. You know, you've heard me you've heard me ramble about how I have a different understanding of YouTube compared to other people because I've been on it for so long and I've seen it all. And I'm implementing the techniques that I've seen, but I'm not implementing everything. And, you know, I s I'm slowly dipping my toe into the water. I don't want to just dive right in. And just start spitting off. Oh, please subscribe. Please like. Please hit. The, please hit the bell icon. Blah 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 blah. I'm sure eventually I'm gonna do that because that's the YouTube game. You gotta play by the rules, or else you're not gonna be the success. And a lot of a lot of big YouTubers out there right now are telling their audience members do not pursue <laughs> a career in YouTube it's not worth it for many reasons M the monetization is the biggest reason but you know what you gotta prove them wrong sometimes and yeah I know I'm gonna get hit with all the demonetization bullshit but I'm I'm willing and ready to uh, take that. That's a risk worth doing and having been done to me. Uh, if I know that I can actually uh, gain some sort of following on this platform. And you know, if eventually YouTube becomes so shitty I gotta move to a new platform, well, so be it. It'll be sad. That'll be a sad day if that ever happens, but sh shit. It's more than likely going to happen one day. Nothing really lasts forever. We, Especially now that we have so much technology that the technology builds upon itself faster and faster because you you have the piece of technology that can make a new piece of technology which can make a new piece of technology and it <laughs> you use the old technology to make the new technology and then the new technology to make newer technology so it progressively becomes easier and quicker to develop new things and new ideas so 
y- you know, people in the 1800s would think, oh, this is it. I think we've invented everything. We're done. We got the we got a we got a, a carriage, and the horse pulls it. What else do you need? And then they f- came out with cars. And then, literally, everyone stopped using carriages. Not like right at that moment. It, t- I'm sure it took a little while for people to adapt and adjust. And that's gonna happen with us with this with Teslas and 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 <laughs> and uh, electric automated cars. It's gonna get to a point where we don't even have to purchase a driver's license. We might just have to do a quick quick uh crash course on how these automated cars actually work but the majority of the vehicle is going to operate itself children of the future are going to grow up not knowing how to actually drive a vehicle manually it's going to be the robots will do it and then i'll be that grandpa in the back in the back of the 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 room at Christmas time, saying, "You kids got it too easy. When I was your age, I had to drive the fucking car myself. For if I wanted to go to the fucking store, I had to drive three hours in traffic because the traffic was backed up so far, and there was accidents. We had it. We had it rough." You know, I could have killed myself thousands of times. I've seen people die because they drive their own vehicles. You kids got it too easy. You don't understand. You know those old people? I would not like to be that type of old person, but who knows? People change. Who knows what kind of old person I'm going to be? Really makes a person curious, though, doesn't it? I thought I was going to end this podcast, but I haven't yet. But I will right now because I got more shit to do, and it's uh, getting late. So thanks for watching this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I will see you in the next one. Peace. I'll see you later, fellas. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, shit. Bye. Laughter comes, dies down, and then I go right back up to it. Laughter again. Non-stop. I'm feeling good. And now the two... I hate that. Every time I do that, hit the goddamn button. Okay, okay, pause it, pause it, we're done, we're done, we're done, send it home, send it home now.